Hello YouTube, this is Morgan Airspeed Prime here with my next Star Wars video. This is going to be my review for The Bad Batch Episode 15, which is called Finale Part 1. We're getting Part 2 next week, and in the meantime we've also been confirmed for The Bad Batch Season 2, coming at some point in 2022. So that was good to hear. There's no way they're going to resolve everything in just one more episode, but it will be interesting to see what they decide to focus Season 2 on, and where this season ends off because they could do some interesting things. So um, yeah, this episode was really strong. Uh, I think the main highlight definitely is that they finally got into giving Crosshair some character development. That we only really got a chance to know him a little bit in the Bad Batch arc from the Clone Wars and a bit at the start of the first episode and then he was just the, the enemy member of the Bad Batch controlled by his inhibitor chip and the character really came from a few moments where you could tell that uh, he was thinking about the squad. You could tell that there's some emotions going on. That that inhibitor chip control is is sort of selective in terms of how much it controls them. And so there's, um, there's moments for the character to have these type of moments and have these doubts. And they really got into it here when they had Hunter and Crosshairs kind of have their sort of big confrontation. Now, there's some kind of important reveals that happen here. I suppose we'll get straight into it. Uh, Crosshairs reveals that he has had his inhibitor chip removed for a while now. I think he specifically says what a long time. But I think we know for sure, at the very least, he has the chip in like the opening three-parter because we've known for a while that the way that their the Empire were controlling him specifically was that they were performing that kind of procedure on him to sort of like amplify the power of his um, inhibitor chip. So are they saying that it was removed after his injury a few episodes ago with the jet engines? Um, I'm not really sure. Or is it a lie and he does have it and the Empire told him that it was removed? Um, that That's what I'm not clear on, that they made you sort of question like, you know, at the same time as Hunter asks, we as the audience are also asking like, since when do you have your inhibitor chip removed? Because from Hunter's perspective, I guess he's considering the idea, like, if you've had your chip removed, why have you not abandoned the Empire? But the reveal, the big reveal with Crosshairs is that apparently his true feelings on things right now are that he actually sort of just wants to be part of the Empire. He feels this is how the Bad Batch can be best used uh, post-Republic that he feels they, they can do more than just, you know, scavenging around the galaxy, uh, fleeing, and, you know, he, he, he also wants things to be better for Omega, that he, he thinks it, it is sort of unsafe for her to be traveling around with them, wanted all the time. So he actually sort of gives her the out to, you know, you send her off-world on a ship on her own. It's better, to, it'll be a better life for her than running around with you guys. And, and Hunter argues that no, she needs to be with us. Um, so it's very much the case where, you know, Crosshairs, you know, good soldiers follow orders is the sign of the inhibitor chip. But it seems like Crosshairs has sort of adopted that to be his actual sort of um, view on things. That he feels, you know, he is a soldier. He can be best used as part of the Empire to keep the galaxy safe because that's what they apparently do in his mind and obviously it speaks to the idea that the Bad Batch can see the issues with the Empire and uh, obviously oppose it so they have this clear-cut thing where they're basically saying right now inhibitor chips completely thrown out the window based on what they say in this episode Crosshairs and Hunter and basically Crosshairs and the rest of the Bad Batch have a fundamental disagreement over how they actually view the Empire, that Crosshairs being part of the Empire isn't just because of the inhibitor chip, he actually feels that that is the best way that uh, things can be done and wants the Bad Batch to join him to help the Empire protect the galaxy. Um, and An interesting perspective, there's going to have to, of course, in the, fi the final part of the finale next week, be some stuff where they, they get into uh, okay, has your inhibitor chip been removed? What's going on here? Because um, it feels like there's still a few other things to figure out here in all of this, and that's not the full truth of it all. 
Now, the other thing with Crosshairs is that he does basically mention the idea that, you know, effectively to Hunter, you left me behind. Now, this was something in a lot of the earlier episodes when we were kind of hoping, like, okay, we've left Crosshairs behind. It feels like Hunter is kind of feeling a little bit guilty about that. He doesn't really want to talk about Crosshairs in those early episodes. So, <clears throat> this is something we've been waiting for them to sort of bring up, and it turns out to be true that, yeah, Hunter has some regrets about leaving Crosshairs behind, and actually, Crosshairs did feel some of the pain about being left behind by the rest of his squad. Now, of course, you have the whole inhibitor chip thing of, like, you were shooting at us, um, that's why they left, that they saw it as he was attacking them. Now, they obviously learned the full truth about the inhibitor chips a little bit later on, and so they didn't have exactly full context to things back then, but they, 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 they knew enough to know that he was sort of being controlled. But in that specific situation, um, they you know, obviously didn't really have the ability to get him out of that situation as well. Um, it obviously makes you sort of then question, like, um, are we just ignoring all of the times like you were on opposite sides of the battlefield here and you were shooting at them? Um, so, so there's a few things that do need to be explained in terms of, you know, he says his inhibitor ship has removed for a while. Uh, so how long ago was that episode with the jet engines? Um, I, I don't think it was that long ago where you would say it was a long time. Um, so it feels like there's some he's been lied to or something like that, that, that something else has gone on here and, and we'll, we'll see what happens. They obviously by the end of the episode, they have crosshairs with them. He, he got he, Hunter has to shoot him with the stun gun and, uh, they're, they're bringing him with him as they go to escape off Camino as Camino that, you know, Topoca city, uh, the main cloning facility is destroyed by the, uh, star destroyer attack. So, um, really emotional moment right at the end, and you could tell that they were definitely framing this as here is the sort of true end of the Clone Wars. The idea of more clones being produced has now gone up in flames with this facility going. That it's done now. Um, and just, you know, them zooming across the different parts of the facility, including the Bad Batches kind of, uh, you know, room, you know, it hits you because this show is doing that transition between the Clone Wars and the sort of Empire era. So this is something that had to happen eventually. Obviously, there was some expectation, might they do the kind of clone, clone rebellion on Kamino, but sort of in a way as expected. The, em <clears throat> the Empire choose to just get rid of, um, you know, the, 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 the Kamino facility um, rather than kind of work with it. They have, like is explained here, they've moved all the actual clones off worlds, so all the regs and stuff like that. We saw that a little bit in the last episode, I think, and they confirm it here. There's basically no clones on Kamino at this point. There's also no Kaminoans, highlighting that, of course, again, from the last episode. They've basically taken all the scientists off world and I guess pretty much taken everyone. So this gets across the idea that the idea of the, the knowledge of cloning is saved in all of this uh, and we'll see where the Empire plan to use it. I suppose we, we basically already know that, but um, they're completely just destroying the cloning facility here because they are <clears throat> done with clones, completely done with clones. So um, that's the, the confirmation that we get here. So there are still clones out there, of course, are, you know, free clones in a way. But then there are also, I suppose, the last batch in a way, the last, you know, selection of the clones that are out there. And I, I'm, I'm going to be interested to see what happens with them of like, have they just been killed, like executed um, or... Are they actually going to be used for something or other? Uh, and I'm guessing we'll, we'll deal with that in Season 2. Because uh, I can definitely see it being a little bit of a plot point. Just the Bad Batch making it their goal to maybe save as many clones as possible. And, and we get a real kind of uh, proper exploration of that. That, yeah, why is it that it seems like there's only like a handful of clones left. Even just like a few years later. Um, and sure... 
the the clones have accelerated aging and and so their their lifespan is basically halved but you know the the clones that we have in like rebels and so on are not like so old that they'd be dying of um old age just yet but i suppose they're getting towards that so you know it's just that idea of like there should be more older clones so what happens to the thousands tens potentially hundreds of thousands of clones that are still left um because the empire seems like they are done with them for the most part and they're only really using these sort of clone commandos and com commanders and stuff like that so that is interesting to consider um the other major kind of i suppose potential reveal thing in this episode was um Omega uses her information and I suppose connection with Nalase to get them into the facility on Camino using Nalase's like, secret research lab as the way to get in. And in this lab, it's revealed that this is the place where Omega and the Bad Batch were created. This is where uh, Omega, as being an unaltered clone, was created. And um, also, this is where the Bad Batch got their kind of... Uh, you know special powers basically added into them now the reveal here i suppose is effectively that omega is older than the bad batch i think um just because she is aware of like this is where you were created and if they were both if they're all created at the same time <clears throat> she wouldn't necessarily have that um concept especially because she is the unaltered clone with without the the enhanced aging so it, it would take her longer to get to the point where she'd realize that that is the situation so it speaks to the idea that she's she was old enough to sort of realize that they that w when they were sort of being grown and then sent off that she, she knows that full story which you know th this feels a little weird in the sense that like I view Omega as being maybe 10, 11, 12 at the most. And if we're saying that she is now older than the Bad Batch, that means that the Bad Batch are all under 11 years old, but that is doubled basically because of, you know, they're all adults. Um, are they only like sort of, you know, physically sort of 22? Because they look like more experienced clones which would have to i think imply that they're maybe older than that so th th there's a few things going on here where obviously they can make this work by basically saying the age acceleration is different between different batches of clones and they could just say that the bad batch is like has slightly enhanced aging as well so that they look like more inexperienced uh, more experienced clones even though they um, are actually younger than a lot of them and um, because what was it? In Attack of the Clones, they said that um, they're age accelerated to the point where they will be combat ready, like they, they, they will be fully matured and combat ready after 10 years. Um, meaning that I suppose you effectively have a 20 ish year old clone after just 10 years. Now, maybe the age acceleration is actually like two point something, and this helps to fix this maybe slight issue here. Um, but, um, you know, I, I just. I felt like this was one of those things where, like, it was cool and all to see this, but the moment didn't hit as hard for me as um, I think they were maybe hoping it would from the from the writing perspective because it was just like, this is where we were born, and it's like it's just this extra facility that's still on Camino that they all acknowledge is just like yeah, this looks like ever any cloning facility, and Omega just explained that this is where you were, this is where you got your enhancements, and that's it. With the subtle reveal being that, well, if she's able to acknowledge that this is what, like, she saw that happen, that retro, that that basically is her secretly revealing that she's older than them. But what exactly does that mean? We we sort of already, we already got the sort of core of what this reveal was about. That she's obviously an unaltered clone. It's not just that she's like, um, been grown in the last you know few years and you know she's only five but doubled that to ten or something like that no we got that the second they revealed the whole alpha omega thing that she is the sort of other equivalent to boba fett and um, so this reveal 
wasn't as much of a reveal as you thought. It was still a nice moment. It's just like, what what exactly am I meant to take from this? I suppose was the 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 main issue. It feels like are we are we going to go to Nalise? Is there something more with Omega? Because at this point, it's kind of looking like, wait, d is there anything more to reveal with Omega, or is it the whole Alpha Omega thing that that that's all? The big reveal with her actually was because obviously the, the cloning is done and this whole idea of Omega needs to be the one who we get to use as uh, the template to make more enhanced clones that whole plot point seems to be sort of done because the Empire is done with Kamino so are we gonna have to go and get Nala say for something are we going to maybe do some sort of Omega force reveal Um that would be that would definitely be something that opens the door to like oh that's why omega is important as the first ever clone who has force abilities which otherwise seemed like a thing that was impossible you can't clone someone and give them force abilities and um, so her having that would be something hugely significant and would open the door to the whole snoke palpatine stuff from the sequels um but uh anyway there's that so that's I think most of what I wanted to say here again it, it was the first part of the finale so a lot of it was set up the big stuff will come next week but they did a great job with setting the stage for a lot of things and leaving us with sort of questions where I'm kind of like why are we, like what are they doing with the whole crosshairs thing that are they is there going to be a reveal that like he was lied to about his inhibitor chip being removed or has it been removed what does that mean where are they going to end up with these characters in that there's still this sort of expectation of like is Crosshairs going to redeem himself by sacrificing himself for the team or maybe the reverse because they've kind of in the dynamic that they had here it was kind of Crosshairs very much putting all the guilt on Hunter. You made the decision to leave me behind Um you didn't like you didn't bring me with you you didn't give me the same choice that you all had. What if Hunter sacrifices himself for Crosshairs and then Crosshairs has to redeem himself by becoming sort of the new leader of the Bad Batch? Um, that will be a great dynamic going into the second season as much as it will be sad to see Hunter killed. But like I've said before, I almost feel the better dynamic would be that, that you have everyone survive and you just go with the dynamic of, yeah, Crosshairs is, is going to drastically alter the team dynamic because he is different now he has different views than the team and if something happens where you know his his faith in the empire is shaken sure we have the path to redemption there but he still has to redeem himself and you wonder like what's his dynamic with omega going to more be like because i think we only had like one scene in the earlier episodes that related to it um and you want to see more of that you know, Hunter and Crosshair seems to be the main uh, dynamic in the team that they're going for. But there, there's there's room to do more. And it gave you the, the glimpse of like, yeah, I kind of want to see the full team back together. Um, because they showed us when they were fighting the droids that Crosshairs had to fight with the team to defeat all those droids. And they played the Bad Batch music and it was like the early episodes of the season. It was like the Bad Batch arc seeing the full Bad Batch squad, but I suppose now with Omega, with Echo also, um, going for it. <clears throat> and I can feel, I, I kind of feel like that dynamic is something that I want to see a little bit more of, because uh, the criticism I think I've had about this has been that I don't think every member of the Bad Batch is a particularly strong character. And in this episode, you sort of turned Crosshairs into a bit of an interesting character by having him have a very different perspective to the rest of the team. He already was a bit of a different personality to the rest of the team, being more quiet and, uh, you, know, you know, more of a kind of killer in a way. But, yeah, I, I want to see what that where that goes. So, in the comments, let me know what your thoughts were on this episode. Um, but that has been the video. Thanks for watching, and bye.